I've decided to put in more storage here on this aft bulkhead um, to match the nav station here. And I've already put together this rough frame from um, an old peak teak picnic table that I've been using. Uh, but the wood is actually yellow bellow, I, I found out. Um, I just need to notch it up here for this. Um, also, these little corner blocks, I've left uh, about a half inch uh, recessed so that the plywood, the teak plywood face, uh, will be able to fit in there flush. And uh, that'll be my final piece of teak plywood that I have left over from cutting out the bulkheads. Okay, so at this point, I was able to notch out the top to get around the handrail there. Um, also added in some dividers here. Uh, the original intention of this storage area was to put in a ditch bag or a abandoned ship bag, but I don't think <laughs> I don't think there's going to be enough room for that. This is kind of small, so um, decided to just put in some other stuff uh, like the stereo will go there. Uh, maybe an area for storing small items and I'll probably have this closed off with a hinge and a latch. Uh, maybe um, put in a fire extinguisher and some other things in there. Here it is with the corners rounded with a router. Um, and the whole thing's been sanded down. Okay, so I've added these face pieces. Uh, that's where the stereo will go. Storage, storage. Uh, mounting area for the fire extinguisher. Um, this will have a door on it with a hinge. There's a small shelf inside. Um, I still need to work out what I'm doing here uh, because the back of the, the screens uh, stick out about an inch. So probably will bat, bump, bump out a, a panel and then add a shelf to that for maybe for a uh, small pair of binoculars or something like that. And that's exactly what I did. Uh, put this shelf in here. I just screwed it in. Um, it's sticking out. Uh, this piece is, is away from the bulkhead about an inch. Gives me room for the gauge. Um, this one's obviously just hidden by the door. Uh, all the wiring can go behind here. Um, and this little shelf sticks out uh, a good amount because reaching around here uh, to grab the binoculars, even though they're a smaller pair, is a lot easier if it's sticking out. Also realize I probably have a bit of room here. I, I put this one a little bit further outboard than this one so that I could attach maybe a small handle. Um, not sure how much that's going to help, but... Um, it's a, it's a possibility. So, uh, also put in this latch here, brass latch. This is the last of my brass latches. I had bought a box of these um, at a chandlery in the San Francisco Bay Area some years ago and used those up. I, I really like those. Um, also, it's my last piece of teak plywood. I just have some scraps left, which I probably will use elsewhere. Um, so now uh, that it's temporarily mounted, I'm going to take this apart and varnish it. Okay, so I'll put in my binoculars, fire extinguisher, stereo. Got some compartments here. Um, and the open compartment here, um, I suppose this could serve as a table, although you probably wouldn't want to get this point in your neck. <laughs> So, um, and I think that's a wrap. My next project is to install a little bit of storage here um, above the head uh, and just below the side deck. Uh, this will also hide that wiring terminal block and uh, radar junction box, as well as some of the plumbing here for the uh, deck. Uh, for the holding tank uh, uh, pump out and the wash down. So 
And my first step is to put in a bottom to this storage uh, made out of marine plywood. Uh, I did have to make sure it fit with all of those hoses, and wires and such. And now I've put on this um, face frame, kind of just wedged it in there to get a feel for how this might go. It's obviously not together, um, although I did put the track on top. Uh, still got to do a lot of fitting here. So now I've, I've got it um, <clears throat> varnished and I'm trying to get this fitted properly. Um, having a little trouble. Uh, still got to work out how I'm going to run the wire through there. I'm assuming uh, wire loom and then uh, put a hole in that area right around there. Also installed the sliding doors. These are made from what remained of the old chart table. So that'll work out that wiring. Okay, so I was able to work that out with the wire loom. Uh, I just put a hole right in there. Uh, got some insulated clamps. Runs across next to the beam. Wiring from the mast will come through those holes. And then uh, I will cut a hole in here and it'll run to the terminal blocks, which are in here. And I had, which I had shown when I installed those in, I don't remember what part, the part where I did the nav station. Also, uh, I installed another berth light here. This is number five. The wiring goes into the wire loom. Um, also, I didn't show this before, but uh, I put in these extra supports for the oak mast beam. Uh, they're made of teak, and they're just they're just extra support. Uh, two on this side, two on the other side, um, just for redundancy, I guess. Also, I let's see, installed a brass toilet paper dispenser and made these extra doors. Um, I wasn't sure about these doors I originally made because I, I don't know the grain didn't look great but um, it's not so much that I thought I didn't think they were gonna fit right so I ended up making these with some um, leftover plywood that I had from the galley um, they actually look nicer than the other ones the, the grains going horizontally instead of vertically um, so maybe I will install those but um, for now I'll leave that the way it is and move on to the next project. Next, I thought I'd make a folding table. Um, and this wood is, is left over from the galley rebuild. Actually, I did buy extra for this purpose. Um, and what this is, is um, two sheets of quarter inch teak plywood, one on top, one on bottom. And in the middle, there's a sheet of quarter inch uh, oak plywood. Uh, I'm going to glue all these together and that should uh, provide a very stiff board to begin with. So gluing it up, now clamped up, and now everything's trimmed and cut into three pieces. So the idea here is that these two pieces will fold out to a bigger table. Um, and I'm basing this design on uh, the cockpit table that's actually made by Edson. However, uh, making some, uh, some modifications. Uh, of course, the dimensions will be fitted to my boat as well as uh, a few other details um, to make this more of a custom job. All of the trim and molding has been cut and fitted. All of the trim has been epoxied on. And now put in these flush hinges, uh, which takes a bit of time because of uh, having to recess in each piece here <clears throat> with a Dremel and a chisel. And we need some adjusting, but I think this is basic shape. Um, did a little sanding, but needs a lot more. 
now all sanded down. And if you've seen any of my other videos, it won't surprise you to see this next part, and that is yet another inlay. Um, and I started with just placing it on top, drawing around it, then cutting out the line, or just scoring the line with a razor blade, and then cutting the veneer with the Dremel, and then just uh, epoxying it down with unthickened epoxy. Um, this one actually came out much better than the other ones. I guess I'm getting better at it. Um, no real gaps here in between the, the inlay and the, and the veneer of the plywood. So, um, prep this for sanding, or rather I've already sanded, uh, prep this for varnish and um, see how it looks. And quite a bit of varnishing later. Uh, actually quite a bit, meaning a lot more than average. Um, here's what I have and I'm I'm somewhat pleased. This didn't come out perfect, but uh, yeah, it is a table, so it's going to get scratched up. Um, I had some issue with this inlay. It actually lifted up um, after about eight or so coats, uh, and I had to kind of get in there and inject more epoxy, then re-varnish the whole thing. <clears throat> um, ends are kind of sticking up a tiny bit, but I, I think when you a little weight on it actually levels out but even so um, you know as time goes on it's going to um, it's going to straighten so um, we'll see we'll see uh, time will tell about the practicality of this this uh, table in such a small boat um, the next part is going to be the most interesting and that is the table leg uh, the boat did come with this table leg uh, I believe it's made of aluminum and it screws into that fitting there in the cabin sole as well as the same thing right there in the cockpit uh, I'm not sure if those were done at the factory I have seen another Contessa with those um, still not sure if, uh, if that was a later edition though it's mounted just needed to unscrew the piece there with that tool in the cabin so the table itself needs a flange here to screw into this uh, but I'm just going to place it on there to simulate the how much room I'll actually have so fold it up like that it doesn't seem too bad I could probably squeeze by if needed um, but when you open it up of course that's not going to be possible which might not even be an issue um, you know this is a good backup at least to what I'm planning and now on the cockpit same thing pretty good uh, spacing here to get by um, and opening candlelight dinner with my wife under the stars uh, so, so the uh, original Edson table that I that inspired this particular table actually has it hanging on the, the pedestal pedestal guard. Um, I would probably need to make it a little smaller because it probably sticks out an inch on either side and act, restricts access uh, to getting by. But um, you know, it's still a possibility. Not too bad. Okay, and the other idea I've had here comes from um, an old Volkswagen camper that I had 20 years ago. I used to take my kids camping in. Um, and that is the L-shaped swinging arm, uh, but with a, a few modifications. And right now I'm still up in the air about this. So. Um, I have some ABS pipe and I could have just as easily done this with uh, PVC but ABS is what I had on hand um, and I think the black looks pretty cool so uh, HD, HDPE cutting board this would mount to under the lazarette here uh, drill a hole into there 
cut it, then use some thumb screws or something to kind of clamp this thing to here. Uh, so there's an elbow there. From the elbow, I put another piece there. And this number of different fittings. This is just a slip-on piece here. Uh, this screws onto this piece, then there's an elbow, and there's another screw on piece. Then the flange, which would attach to the table. Okay. So this will allow me to, of course, swing out like this. The threaded pieces will allow me to move the table up and down. And this being threaded, it allows me to kind of swivel the table as well. So in practice, this would kind of be like this, and then swing, and then stow like this. It'd be about four inches up from the cushion, or up four inches up from here because of the cushion. And as a precaution, um, when I turn this upwards, I'll probably put a hole in here and then use this uh, spring loaded clevis pin. It's got a little ball here. Uh, stick it in that hole to prevent it from turning back to the storage position. So the only issue with that is that I'm um, really trying to avoid clutter. Uh, this is a small boat. Um, even if it's just me and not me and the wife, um, I still want to keep it clutter free. And having this table, you know, just sticking up like this and then this arm coming down here. Um, it's going to be hard to judge unless I actually do it. So I may, I may hold off on that for now. Uh, let's see. Let's see uh, how this goes. And here's a view of what the stowed table would look like. It's not so much the clutter as it is that it just seems almost obtrusive into, into this, um, into this settee area you know it does it does stick up quite a bit and then it kind of sticks out from here a lot because of that elbow so unless i can find a tighter bend elbow which i i know they exist um but even so it would still in my mind be somewhat obtrusive uh to have that table kind of taking up some of that precious space you know, if someone if someone were sleeping there, I mean, you could, you could easily move it, but still, um, still up in the air. I might just go with the original aluminum table leg only. Okay, uh, I've made a decision on the fate of the table, and what I've decided to do is to keep this center leg, uh, the one that goes right into the floor, uh, that may or may not have been. Um, installed by the factory. Um, the swinging arm or leg that I had showed earlier, uh, I'm going to just keep that on hand, keep the parts for it on hand, um, just in case I decide to change my mind, I could easily install that. Uh, but for now, I'm just going with this uh, table itself. This is the final product. Uh, I have a little latch here uh, in the folded down. Um, when it's folded down like this, it's, it's simply just a tray sort of a thing with the, the molding here. Um, and just give it a little turn and it opens up. Um, I was able to adjust these hinges uh, so that it all lays nice and flat now. Um, the brass screws that the hinges are attached to are, or are attached with rather, are kind of sticking up so I may uh, go down a size um, not really important right now uh, not a priority so maybe I'll do that at a later time
but uh, I think this is good. Um, it's nice and sturdy, uh, and it'll do. What do you think? No comment? And some of the last projects I'll be tackling here, um, well, now that we're kind of in the middle of this lockdown for the uh, COVID-19 situation, uh, which is worldwide at this point, um, I am going to reseal, uh, or rather close up the hole that I had put in in uh, the chain locker for draining um, and go back to the hose, uh, draining the hose into the bilge or even just put a container in the bilge to catch that. I'm, I'm not even sure, but I'm in the process of closing that, um, glassing over that hole, uh, beveling it. Um, also, I had wanted to raise the mast by myself. I had built a uh, hinged tabernacle a couple of years ago, and um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to that. I, I had hoped to splash the boat. Uh, rechristen it <laughs> um, sometime next month uh, I'm not sure when that's gonna happen now uh, but I have plenty of time to work on that uh, other than that just really some aesthetic stuff uh, I gotta um, probably uh, do the deck with um, Kiwi grip and uh, uh, the pedestal I wanted to maybe take that apart again I, I wasn't really happy with some of the pulleys that were in there some of the aluminum pulleys had kind of um, really corroded and, and even started to to kind of fall apart look like they had seized up at one point um and i, I have a source to get some bronze ones uh, pretty inexpensively to replace those so i might do that um also uh as far as the interior goes i think i'm pretty much finished i did uh varnish the, the handrails the retaining boards for the cushions um that's really it for the interior. I just have to move in all of my my stuff, you know, my, my spare parts and tools and everything that uh, I will eventually want with me. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for now.